Hello explorers and wild cooks, Andy from Andy's Fishing here. I'm in the four wheel drive exploring a river, having breakfast. <laughs> it's actually um, the second morning. I got here yesterday afternoon and I'll show you that now. But the, uh, the idea is to explore this new river. Try and, um, I've got access here, but I want to fish as far up as I can. Not today. I'm just doing a bit of an explore today, um, sussing the whole thing out. But the mission I've got planned is probably two or three nights. Um, that'll mean I fish most of this river, which is which is really cool. I love I love doing that, um, fishing fishing new areas. But come and join me where I was yesterday. And the thing I want to do on this trip is catch a wild fish and barbecue it up in like a spicy banana leaf cook up. Should be interesting. <laughs> Andy's fishing and wild cook. There we go. Camp set up. Didn't take very long at all. I'm going to go and catch a fish. It's um, probably about four in the afternoon. Plenty of time to catch my dinner. Just a quick change of shirt, grab my backpack, got the rod, and we'll head down to the river. I like these remote places. I've got actually um, private access in here, so it uh, should, be, should be pretty good. And I'll do a bit of exploring. I've still got a few hours of sunlight, probably yeah, two and a half, maybe three hours. Woohoo! I love exploring. Where's the river? Add on top. Oh, there's a rabbit. A little rabbit. This is interesting. This is a looks like a rabbit track. You've got the two front feet here, and then that could be his bum or his tail. Or maybe, yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to get the first glimpse of this little river. It's always exciting. You never know what you're going to see. These are all cattle footprints, so we um, have a lot of cattle here. I don't think I've seen a person footprint yet, so that's a good sign. Oh, cattle poo. Always, always looking for stuff. And there it is. It's actually quite wide. I didn't think it was going to be that wide. It looks very clear. Now, everyone, or quite a few people will say, I'll oh, just start casting here, but this is all really shallow and now uh, if this is the first video you've seen of mine I try and explain to you how I fish where I fish and uh, because this is really shallow all sandy I can see over there the other bank is a lot of overhanging trees some dead dead timber and it looks deeper so uh, I might have to cross over or I might try and find that on this side but uh, yeah we won't start right here we'll, um, we'll go up a little bit upstream that is it's um, yeah, it's quite shallow, quite small water, but there could be fish. So let's see. First cast. Are there fish right here? Oh, lure's a bit twisted. There we go. Right. First cast, no fish. Let me try over that way a little bit. For some reason, I just wanted to look up and look for a power line, but there's not going to be any power lines out here. How good are these little rapids? I'm going to have to find one that's got a, a little bit more water in it. Let's, oh, this, this actually looks like it could have something in it. Just need that extra bit of depth. Very nice. There's, um, yeah, it looks like a rock bar coming across. We will just randomly fish the rock bar. It's a bit late in the day to see where the rocks are. So we'll just cast one here, one here, one here, one here, all along. Oh yes, is he on? Yep, he's on. Not a huge one again. Oh, that's tiny. But there could have been something following him. So this is definitely not going to be my dinner. A little sooty grunter. They're native to Australia, only found here. There he is. 
Beautiful little fish, hey? They always have a little bit of eyeliner under their, their eye. Hey, off you go, buddy. Yep, he's good. All right, let's see if we can get that bigger one. And then when you're on the snaggy side of the river, you've usually got all these trees down because that's why it's a snaggy side. Because these trees fall in the water and um, make fish habitat. Oh, this looks perfect for a sooty grunter to hang out. It's the end of a big, big log. There's got to be one here. Oh, just touch, touch, come on, come on, touch, touch. Little one's hitting it. Oh, so tiny, why are they getting smaller? Any smaller, they'll be as big as the lure. This is not what I was hoping for. My hey, little guy, tiny, he's only like 12 centimeters long. Hey, off you go. All right, we need to up our game. Got him. Oh, he's a tiny bit bigger. Hmm, at this rate, I'm having, I'm not having fish for dinner, that's for sure. Oh, that's, that's what you get when you go to a, a new spot. Oh, there he goes. You have to suss it out a little bit, see where they're hiding. And that guy was actually right at my feet. There's a big log laying just here. Look at that, right here, right on this log. And this, this guy's a tiny bit bigger. Okay, no more casting out, he's still not, not the size I want. Okay. He's getting close, he's getting very close. It's about 27 centimeters, I want about a 30. They are heaps of fun to catch though. Let's, uh, let's try a cast, actually not even a cast, I'll just try and get one from right under my feet. Little cast. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, there's a couple there. There is a couple. That was actually not a bad hit out there. You can just see the swirl. Oh, yeah. There's another one. Oh, I think I need to find a spot with some bigger fish just whoops just not quite what I'm after oh oh yes that's him I reckon that could be dinner oh I dropped him I dropped dinner all right there's a swirl mm, let's try that again Oh, yeah, they're not real big, they're not real big, but they're, they're definitely hiding under this log. They're just under that log. Yeah, another smallish one. So this is the lure I've been getting them on. It's a little lively lures, micro mullet. They're, uh, yeah, deadly on, um, well, obviously sooty runner, but brim, flathead, you name it. Yeah, very good. I might just change to a, um, a surface ziggy. Um, it's just getting to that time of day, and this was twisted before, and the fish were hitting it. So, there's a good chance I'll get a bigger fish on a surface lure right now. So I'll just show you quickly how I tie on a lure. This is a, a loop, you, you put a, a granny knot, an open loop in the line first, through the lure, through the loop, like so, and then round three times, and back through the loop. There you go, that's called the perfection loop, and that gives that lure lots of action. We'll see if we can get the, the Ziggy 70 smashed on the surface. I'll do a fairly long cast. I think there's a, a lot of nice water in this hole here. Look at that. I love that ziggy going left, right, left, right. Making a little wake. Oh, had a go. Come on. Oh, got him. 
Oh, another little guy. But that was about the third cast. There we go. Nice little sooty grunter. Hey, off you go, buddy. Want your daddy. So have you guys figured out by now that if I'm not getting home in the dark, it's not a day of fishing with Andy. It's um, yeah, almost every time I go fishing late afternoon, I get home in the dark. So it's up here, there's a lot of trees here. But that's um that's fair enough. I got here at like four, started fishing around 4.30. Um, yeah, and it's uh, it's not enough time to, to suss a place out. I did catch a heap of fish there. I um, I caught a lot off camera. Um, so tomorrow morning I'll head out again and catch my lunch. But first I'll um, I'll get back to the camp, start the char grill up, and cook some dinner. Sit by the fire, or sit by the char grill, and uh, yeah, just enjoy the evening. It's uh, so peaceful out here. Um, yeah, there's no one around. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Got the coals nice and hot there. And here uh, yeah, a couple of beef sausages. Always have a backup. And, uh, yeah, first thing tomorrow, go and catch my fish. But it's beautiful. There's not a cloud in the sky. There's plenty of stars out. You can hear crickets or cicadas. I think crickets. Uh, maybe a couple little frogs too. Not sure. And that one's a frog, anyway. Nice being out here. It's quite fun cooking on a char grill. I um, yeah, I have to keep turning them and moving them so they they cook nice and evenly. So, yeah, keeps me entertained. As they say in Master Chef, I have cooked them beautifully. Yeah, they, uh, they smell great. They look great. I don't know if the the light's going to do them justice here, but I'll eat maybe four of those. Save two for breakfast. Mm. And it's just really oh, nice sitting nice. here in the dark, watching the the coal smouldering away while I have my dinner. It's a very very pleasant thing. Aboriginal to do. people used to live here twenty, I think even forty thousand years ago, and it's a lot of culture, a lot of lot of knowledge. And I'd, I'd like to meet with some of the, the elders or, or caretakers of the land. I'm not actually from this country either, as, as are most people. Um, Europeans only moved here 200 years ago, or a bit over 200 now. But uh, yeah, I think there's a lot to be learnt, and if it's not learnt now, it'll get forgotten. 20 or 40,000 years is a lot of knowledge. Anyway. I'm going to leave uh, tonight's thought there. I'll see you guys in the morning. Another day, another fish. I'm taking the high road today, just walking along the, the edge of the river here. Get a different perspective on the place. I'm going to uh, probably start with the Ziggy. Want to get, get a nice fish for, for lunch. And uh, probably cover a couple more miles today. Just, um, yeah, interesting checking out different locations. And the higher you are, the more you see. This is cool, it's like one rock that's split in half and another rock deposit has gone formed in the crack. Look at that. I find things like that pretty interesting. Check out this turtle. 
This could be an Irwin's pink nose turtle or something, I'm not exactly sure. It's crazy to think this turtle was only discovered in 1990 by Bob Irwin, Steve Irwin's father. Look at the face, look at the eyes, that's an amazing critter. And they're only found in one system, very rare. It makes me wonder that on my trips maybe I'll find either a lost species or a new species. Everything's possible. First fish for the morning. He's not bad, but I think I can do better. So we'll um, here. We'll let this guy go and try for a bigger one. Woohoo! <laughs> let him go. I'm trying a bit of a different approach today because the, um, the Ziggy casts a long way. I'm going to go in from the other side and there's a nice little hole in there, like a little bay. Ooh, right in the middle of the bay. Ooh, here he goes. Oh, he missed it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Another one. Come on. Oh, they just pushed it out of the water. And again. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> They're following it all the way across. Oh, got him. Yes. <laughs> he came out a while. Oh, little guy again. Little guy. And there was a catfish chasing as well. Oh, and he fell off. I'm going to find a big fish. Maybe on this stick over here. That could be better. Better fish on sticks. Oh, missed it. Come on. Got him. Yes. The problem with these little fish is that it's the same amount of work, and that's not a whole meal for me. So I'm definitely going to keep going until I get a bigger one. Oh, there he goes. Fell off. Very odd. Oh, there he is. There he is. Come on, come on, come on. You didn't get it. Got it. Yes. Oh, and again, not, not massive. I know there's bigger fish in here. Oh, off you go, little buddy. Definitely hanging around the timber. I, um, I tried a few rocks this morning, but when I got it close to some, some sunken timber there, um, yeah, bang, straight on. Beautiful day. Let's get a bigger one. If you I just noticed, that's a big tree trunk there. That could be fish. That could definitely be fish. Tree, yeah, fish love tree trunks. Right there. Going over it. Oh, here he comes, here he comes. Come on. Got him. <laughs> I just waited for that guy to get really comfortable and eat it. Oh, that's funny. Come on, little buddy. Out you come. He's going to shoot off real quick. Hey. There he goes, nice and gentle. Hey. So I've caught a whole bunch from that little snag there. Actually, it's more like a, a line of trees hanging out over the water. I'm just catching little ones, so I'm going to have to keep going. Um, yeah, find, find somewhere where there's some big fish. Exploring is the aim of today, well actually catching a fish for lunch is, but um, I love the exploring, I love it. Oh, and there's not a soul within, I don't know how many kilometres of me. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. What I'd tell you, before I do this, this river crossing here, I normally wear proper crocs, but these cheap imitation things, they're the most slippery, horrible, soft bottom, like if I walk on rocks, it's, yeah, they're really thin, so. Don't buy these things if you're going to go doing what I do. Um, they're just there. They're not made for it. Backwater. And there's a sooty swimming around. Just playing. 
playing Sooty Granta. Let's see if you like this. Oh, behind him. Come on, come on. Here he is, here he is. Oh, got him, yes. <laughs> oh, sidecar Sooty Granta. Hello, little fish. Some of these fish are quite deep and some are long and skinny. This one's a bit deeper, actually. I wonder if that's a male-female thing. Well, maybe we might take you. Yes, you are my lunch. Look at that. He's about, oh, let's see. Yeah, well over, oh, yeah, 30 So the fastest way to kill a fish is to brain spike him. So now to gut it, I'll just cut through here. And we'll go in here. These are actually quite a tough fish to, to gut. And grab the gills and cut between the, the skin and the gills. It's a bit hard to see on this little guy. There we go. And just cut the gills off the backbone. And then just pull out the intestines like so. So that was actually a, a female with the, the eggs. Um, I think they may have a, a deeper body and look at the colour this thing's going now, that's really odd. I've never seen one go go that colour before. Like the the, the multicoloured. Alright, let's um, take him back to camp and cook him up. There's a nice big tree laying down here and a oh there's all the sooties. They're very small. Let's see if there's a big one out off here. Oh, yep, there's a bunch. Oh, oh, got him, yes. Oh, and there's a catfish. <laughs> That's actually not a bad sorty. Oh, and the catfish, the catfish, everyone wants it. <laughs> oh, and now I've got a catfish as well. Oh, almost had a catfish as well. <laughs> Oh, that's wild. Let's see if we can lift this guy in. He's actually bigger than the one I've got for lunch. But I'm only going to kill one fish today. Oh, look at that. That is a big sooty. He's like uh, 33 centimeters. Nice. And the catfish, that was just wild. The catfish in here, they're, they're like the, the sharks of the river. Oh, no. yeah, that's, um, that's pretty wild. There you go. I generally just catch one fish for, per day. I'm not a, a, a huge fish killer. Um, I do like eating them, but yeah, I don't need to catch more than I eat. So off you go, buddy. See ya. Yep, he's good. Yeah. This little Ziggy is doing the work, and I did have a catfish because he ate the hook. He, um, he must have grabbed the hook and got that broken off into his mouth. So otherwise I would have caught two fish on that. That's pretty cool. So I'm actually on my way home, but um, yeah, when you find a good spot with a few fish, have a couple more casts. Let's see if we can get another one. I reckon we will. Oh, <laughs> he hit that hard. Oh, he did hit that hard. I can't help but fish. From from near a river, whether I'm walking home or whatever, always got to have a fish. And we might just go to the next spot. I'm sure we're not done catching fish yet. So while well, I've just got you here, um, the gear I'm using, everybody always asks what gear I'm using. It's a uh, Daiwa rod, uh, triple B. This is actually the triple six, triple B. Um, nice little bait casting rod, folds down to about this big, so it's really cool, about that big, really cool. And then I've got a Concept E, very nice little reel, cast these little lures really far and very smooth, very, very smooth. So yeah, and you've seen the Ziggy, um, yeah, you can get 10% off those, no, sorry, you can get 5% off these. If you check out the link, there's a link in my description. Um, any lures, not just the Ziggies, any lively lures, click on the link, you get 5% off. Um, the code is 
Andy's Fishing. So just use that, the, the, the coupon code, Andy's Fishing. It's a good fish sitting next to that rock. There's a bit of weed. Oh, straight on it. Some good fish in there. Oh, yes. Oh, that's a monster. That is a monster. Oh, it's a catfish. That's why they go so hard. Oh, catfish. Oh, definitely the hardest fighting thing in this river. And they did take a popper, or at least a ziggy. Here he is. Oh, he's at least 50 centimeters, I'm going to say. Yeah, he's a good one. He's a good one. I had to get the hook out of him. Look at that. Yeah, they do fight hard. And perfect spot over there, right on that deep rock there. I'm sure there's some sooty grunter in there as well. I was actually thinking maybe a barramundi, but we'll see. And like I said, I'm only taking one fish home. So Mr. Catfish can live another day. Let's see if there is another fish there rather than a catfish. Let's see if there's a sooty grunter or barramundi. I'm sure there were sooties there before. Oh, there's a swirl. And, oh, got him. Yes. That feels like a sooty grunter. Yes. Oh, and he's got two friends, three friends, four friends, six, ten friends. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool. But yeah, such a perfect spot right there. All right, off you go, buddy. Actually, I can see 10 or 15 right here. Let's see this. Bounce off the rock and... Yep, straight on. <laughs> a little better, a little better. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, and he's gone. There he is. See ya. Oh, that was a long, hot walk. First thing I'm going to do is sit in the river and scale that fish. I don't think I've found a better place or way to scale a fish. <laughs> I'm just going to sit right here in my, my very large sink and uh, yeah, take the scales off this fish. Scaling fish underwater is actually quite good because then the scales don't flick up everywhere. If you're doing it in the, the kitchen, do it in the kitchen sink. But at the moment, this is kind of my kitchen sink. I don't really want to call it that. But yeah. There we go. Fish is nicely scaled. And while I'm down here, I may as well put a few cuts in him. Just cut like that, like that, like that. That way, the flavour from my ingredients will go right in the meat. There we go, three, four cuts. Right, just like that. A look, yeah, coals are coming along nicely. And as the video title suggested, there's our banana leaf. Now let's um, start the rice and make the marinade. Here's pretty much all my ingredients. I'm just going to cook a bit of rice, and it's uh, very, very simple to do rice. Even, even out in the bush here, you can do perfect rice every time. I'll just, just show you how. You get um, one quantity of rice, I'm going to do about 200 mils. Then, actually I haven't shown you this either. Part of the cooking set is, where is it? There's my saucepan, there's my plates. Managed to get everything in there. Here we are. That's the lid for the rice cooker. This all comes as a kit. There's a saucepan, there's pots, there's a rice cooker. So yeah, it's really nice. It's aluminium, non-stick. Dump the rice in there. Then these little snow peak bowls. Um, I get everything from Drifter. Uh, so snow peak, uni flame, all from Drifter. Pretty much anything you see, even the chair I'm sitting on, I'll show you that in a second. Um, just makes camping so much nicer. Um, people know me, I, I used to just, yeah. <laughs> go camping with just nothing but um, yeah having having a nice chair having a little stove having the the charcoal grill is, um, is really nice so I've got about 250 mils of water in there so you want one quantity of rice and then like maybe one and a quarter quantities of water now what we do is we just get this to the boil and then put it down to a simmer while the rice is getting to the boil, we may as well make our ingredients ready. Just cut the ends off the chilies, cut them in half, that should be enough. Now these chilies here, 
they're quite big, which generally means if it's a big chili, they're not hot. And we've got three spring onions or shallots, or I don't know, some people call them eschalots. Cut the roots off those. And once again, just into rough pieces. That rice is already up to temperature. Okay, now it's just boiled over. So you try not to let it boil over. Now it's a little tricky during the day like this, but I'm gonna turn it down so it's just a light. I'm doing it by ear actually. I can, I can hear it still burning. And we want the smallest amount of flame possible. So actually we'll just give it a little, a little stir just to stop the rice from sticking. So all you want to do is have the tiniest amount of flame so that there's just a little bubble every now and then. You don't want it to be cooking really hard, just a little bubble. And we'll leave that go for 10 minutes. And then after 10 minutes, we turn it off and just let it sit for another 10 minutes. Perfect rice every time. Thank you, Noah. And then we get my hand chopper. Throw those ingredients in there. You can just hear that hissing away, so that's perfect. Got the time is set for 10 minutes and we'll give that a nice little and chop it doesn't take long the bit's done we'll add some salt lime oil and that will be our fish marinade cut our lime there we go beautiful lime gives it a, a really nice tropical flavor Oh, that smells good. That's going to be yummy on that fish. Mm-mm. Oh, that's the rice ready. Well, that's only 10 minutes cooking. Now, 10 minutes resting. But we'll, uh, yeah, we'll turn that off. You can hear it. It's just whistling still. So I'll turn that off. Okay, we'll get the coals. They're all, yep. Once they turn white, the coals are on their way. That's what we need. Give them a little poke around with a stick. Oh, they're hot. They're hot. They're very hot. Banana leaf. What we'll do is we'll put it on the heat first. Not for very long, just enough to soften it up. Get it, get it a little bit soft. And then we can bend it and fold it more. Let's get the fish into the banana leaf. There we go. We've got our sauce. And I'll actually try and get that in everywhere. Like in, his, in the cuts there. Looks beautiful. That's one side. Mess it around. Oh yeah, this is going to be very yummy. Oh, and that marinade's sticking. That's perfect. I was worried the marinade might just slip off, but I think my banana leaf is a bit small. I'll just make do. Okay. We might do him big side down first. So I'll put him on legs. So there we go. All right. Woo! I probably should have had a little bit bigger banana leaf. But um, we're going to let him cook for probably about 15 minutes. By the amount of heat and the fact that it's wrapped in a banana leaf. I'll just show you a little trick to to hold that leaf there. What I've done is I've just got it's, it's actually this little branch or a little bit of grass stem. And I poked it through there. There we go. And it's it's just like a little little pin or a nail. Mmm, but it's smelling all right. Pretty. It's only been on for five minutes, and it's smelling pretty good. Yeah. Let me show you this chair. It's uh, yeah. It's the first time I've used it, but it's um, really funky. It's very comfortable. It's got a really high back on it. Made by Snow Peak. Got it from Drifter. And um, yeah, it's it's just very comfortable. It's I think it's called like a low low rider because it's it's down on the ground you don't have your legs legs up high and it folds up really simple watch this that's it comfy chair fold it up I like it the rice has been sitting for at least 10 minutes now and this is smelling amazing let's just have a look in here so after after 10 minutes of resting so first 10 minutes of cooking then 10 minutes of resting take the lid off a bit of ash there now 
what we want to do is just give that a little fluff. Look at that, perfect rice. It's not sticking, it's not wet, it's not dry. Let's have a little taste. Mmm. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect rice. Mmm. Mmm, very nice. Mmm, that is good rice. I think that fish has had about, oh, probably a bit over 15 minutes on that side. Let's see if we can turn it over without dropping the whole lot. Oh, got to get that leaf. Oh, now the oil's going everywhere. Okay, let's try and roll it. There we go. Oh, that's really hot. But I think this is going to work. Okay, so the, the charring on here now is um, just, just dead banana leaf. That's, um, yeah, banana leaf there. Let that go for another, I'm going to say, seven to ten minutes. It's always less on the second side because there's already heat in the fish. I'll try and show you this. It's, um, the smell is amazing. It's like a fragrant oil cooking. And you can see the banana leaf is charred, but it's, um, yeah, I, I think the fish will be beautiful. I'm not 100% sure how this is going to work, but we'll get the fish off the heat first. Oh, look at that. Easy, 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 easy. There we go. And then we'll peel back the layers. Try to peel back the layers. Ooh, look at that. Let's get some rice on there. There we go. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Char-grilled fish in banana leaf. Mmm. Couple of pieces of lemon. Look at that. How is that for a first attempt at banana char-grilling fish? I think that's pretty good. Let's try it out. Well, I think the colours are all wrong here. It looks really blue and it's not blue at all. Okay, let's try this fish. Mm. Skin's quite tough, but that's um, that type of fish. Look at that, nice white meat. Hmm. How do I describe that flavour? I've got no idea. Mm. I have to try a couple more bits. There's a bit of, bit of lemon on it, although it doesn't really need lemon, but just put a little tiny bit on there just to make it um, that little freshness kick. You can definitely taste the chilies in there. The onion doesn't taste like onion, but there's, there's something oniony in there. The, um, the meat is really nice, really quite firm and got a few bones. Look at that, really white fur meat. Mm. Mm. Some of this sauce going on bottom here. Look at that. That actually tastes a bit like lasagna. Mmm, wow. That, that paste, the chilli with the, the onion, like a spicy lasagna, that's, that's quite odd. Really nice. It's a little bit odd. Yeah. Oh, you're going to enjoy this. Mmm. That is bizarre. Maybe the oil makes it taste a bit cheesy. But it definitely is a bit like lasagna. Mm. Skin on fish is actually quite good. Mm. Almost like an eggplant lasagna. Very strange, but very nice. <laughs> actually, it just occurred to me, I think... The lasagna or the eggplant lasagna flavour could be coming from the banana leaf. I find that very, very interesting. I'm going to have to cook another fish with banana leaf, maybe a few less spices, and um, see how that goes. Very interesting and odd. <laughs> I'm going to keep eating this, guys. <clears throat> Let me know if you want me to come back here. As I said earlier, what I'd like to do is walk most of this river get right up in the top reach to see what it looks like 
Um, this is fairly dry country. Very dry country, actually. Very harsh country in Australia. Dry, dry, flat, it's harsh. Um, but there's some hills further up. I'd like to go and, um, yeah, probably go up there. If you guys want to see it, definitely let me know. Actually, have a look at this skin. Have a look at this skin. This is, this is interesting. I don't know if you're going to pick it up there, but it's actually quite thick and gelatinous. And if you ask me, that's 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 actually a really good thing. Mmm. Mmm. But yeah, very firm, very thick skin. Interesting. I have eaten one of these before on another overnight trip. Um, I did that one. Well, completely different style, but yeah, it was it was just as nice. So if you didn't get it before, this is Sooty Grunter, and I can probably recommend them. Very, very nice. Mm. Mm. Can't get over that flavour. It's definitely got lasagna flavour in it. Hmm. Wow. I think the chilies might add to the tomato aspect of it, and then the onion and the oil makes it taste like lasagna. But wow. I can't get over it. Alright guys, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified of my new videos. I do them every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and people who've donated through PayPal. Some of you have gone far beyond what I've ever expected. Every little bit helps. And if you want to see more right now, click the, uh, the links above. Catch you next time.